everyone. Good evening from snowy College Park, Maryland, all over Ohio State. 67 55 this evening. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner, Bruce Poster, the Big Dog himself, oh, oh. Rick Jacklich. Guys, what did you make of this win? What a great win. And it's funny, since they came back from that 10 days off from uh, Seton Hall with Bryant and then the game list uh, against IU, this is a different team. I mean, their defensive intensity was incredible. That's what's really brought them back. I thought that was the name of the game, Bruce, was the defensive intensity. You saw Callen on the floor. You saw Morcel on the floor. Sorrell Smith diving for balls. That was excellent. First half, Terp shot 7 of 11 from three, which really helped they us out. They only had one regular field goal in the first half. Well, really? yes, I did One regular know that. field goal. And they held a high state to only one second chance basket the entire first half. So really, really did a great job on defense. And the first half did a great job from behind the line. Well, the funniest thing is they scored 67 points in 35 minutes. Right. Because they didn't score the first five minutes. I know. They're down 8-0 right. in the beginning They're of that game. they put Jacklitz in next game. I would have hit something. <laughs> Another slow start. They were, I think it was 8 to nothing. Right. After, and then, after five minutes. Right. And Maryland ended up with a 14-12 lead. And then they were up 15-12. to But they really didn't give the lead back. Yeah. They built a 10-point lead no matter how rough Ohio State played. Maryland kept their composure and stayed in the game. That's a good team they beat, too. Yeah. Wesson is the real deal. He yeah. is a load down there. He's I mean, a, a real load. Let me tell you, though, I thought one of the key moments of the game was when Shoal came in. And he really took over underneath the basket. And even though he didn't score, you don't have to score to do well. He altered some shots. He, altered he brought a new intensity, and Sorrell Smith came in with him at the same time. And you can see the pace of the game changed and the way the Terps control the game changed so right what there. what I saw when they warmed up and, and they were dancing to the pregame music, and you could see the lion, Shoal, sort of, sort of in on that. You can see a different attitude. When Turgeon said that when one of the meetings – during that break, they said you got, guys have to remember to have fun doing this. I saw guys; they were know, having fun. they were having a good time. This was a great. This is one of the most exciting. Fifty-seven of the scores gone now off the scoreboard. Sixty-seven fifty-five. Sixty-seven fifty-five game. It was a heck of a game at fifteen to twelve. I mean, it was actually fun. Most of these games at this score are a slog. This was an exciting low-scoring game. You don't see that much anymore. And Anthony Cowan, he looked every bit of an All-American in this game. He really did a great job. Points. I still don't know. Well, he's at the line a lot in that second half. You and know, he hit a couple big threes, including a big, big, big three. You know, that Rick, put them up ten. After we lost to Seton Hall on our show, I said to Wayne, I said, you know what? And he'll verify it. I said, we're going to win the next three games. I had no doubt in my mind. Because the way they played against Seton Hall. I've never seen him play worse. Something was wrong. We Seven points in 16 minutes. Right. I've we never seen him play worse. But, ha, ha, Bruce, how did that team against Seton Hall, how is that the same team that played the way they did against Marquette? It wasn't, it wasn't the same. It's unbelievable. All right? It wasn't Wait, the same. So what do you put your finger on? Well, we all know. It's the unspoken you know, right. subject. But all right. They had internal turmoil. They fixed it, and they look much better now. Right. Tur you know what it is? They have a coach who knew how to handle a tough situation, and Turgeon did a great job, and that's the bottom line. That so is. We'll and that. we will be back on the Big Dog Post Game Show here in happy Snowy College Park in a moment after this word from the Big Dog himself. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Jacklers Law Group clients are happy clients, and here's why. Our lawyers are experienced, hardworking professionals who fight until you win, and you pay no fees until we do. If you've been injured in a car, truck, or train crash, we meet you where you are and when you can. If you've been in a crash, don't wait. Call the big dogs now. Let us handle the insurance company so you can focus on healing, and you'll see why we were named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. We're back in College Park, Maryland, 67-55 over Ohio State. Joining in, young Terp Jordan Viner, 
And now, well, standard feature, Cordell Woodland. Our producer tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. All right. We got a lot to talk about. On Dirt Talk tomorrow on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. I said to you at the end of the game, it makes for a much easier ride home when you win. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't care how bad the weather is, all right? Much easier. (laughs) But here's the bottom line. We talked about it while we were sitting up there. What's going to happen Friday when they go to Iowa? Can they overcome this road thing? Jordan, what do you think? I don't think so. I mean, I'd love to say so with how they played, but I I just don't see it, honestly. I'd love for it to be true, but... No. <laughs> Two big road games, Iowa and Wisconsin. Would you say the key is we got to get a split, Cordell? Definitely a split, if nothing else. The consistency is one thing that Maryland seems to get better with. And these last couple of games, them being able to pull out wins, especially early in the Big Ten season, I think will help them go on the road for the Iowa test and the Wisconsin test. Uh, as long as they don't fall behind early and they continue to rely on their defense, which seems to get better each game, Cowan is getting hot. Uh, from three, Jalen is getting more sound down low on both ends. I like their chances. What do you make of, since you used to go to every game for years, now you look at this from afar in Fargo, what do you make of actually being here? I mean, I miss being here, especially during big games like this. I mean, this is, as far as I've seen, I've seen it quite a bit now, this is one of the best basketball environments in the country. It really is, and people seem to forget that a lot. But, like, games like tonight, you find like 10 other venues like this maybe in the country for big games it's you can't beat it you know cordell and me talked after the at the at the end of the first half and i said to him who's the better team out there you said clearly maryland yeah it was no doubt about it at halftime maryland was the better team and i don't care that ohio was ranked number two and they beat kentucky all that doesn't mean anything maryland was a better team tonight well, right. look, Ohio State has not been the same since they beat Kentucky. I think it was 71-65 on the 29th. They've lost three in a row. Uh, what did you think of that Wiggins dunk? Is that one of the plays of the night on ESPN? It probably will be, especially since SVP was here. Can't hurt. And it was all three. It was on ESPN too, so that helps. Yeah, I, I mean, he comes in, he, he finishes big time, and that what was one of the many plays that got so, the crowd on FB. That that sent so, the roof open. So they start that play, and Bruce says, "Well, you got to get Wiggins to to shoot the ball." And of course, then Ayala shoots it, and then here comes Wiggins. So Bruce got that one right. <laughs> Ayala was a little cold in the second half. Yeah. All right, and the, with, if he had hit some of those threes, this would have been a blowout. But we're not complaining. It's just a, it's a W. Okay. They're three and one and thirteen and two. I'll go with thirteen and two. Thirteen and two. Okay. Last last question here. Uh, grade the maturity of Jalen Smith for taking that beating from Caleb West and not losing his cool. Jordan. Oh, well, Mason, my young chair partner, bashed Jalen end over end for being not being tough enough, and that's something that's legit. But he he took it. Caleb Watson's a tough, tough dude, and he Jalen did not back down. He got him in foul trouble. He played great, and honestly, that's an A for me. You can't, you can't hang in, a, hang in a better than that against Caleb Watson. You know what's amazing about Watson? His foul shot was beautiful for a big guy, for anybody. All right, so you, what's your grade on how Sticks handled Weston tonight? I thought Sticks held his own. It might have been the only position where maybe we lost the individual battle. But uh, look, Weston is a load. Mm-hmm. He really is. I mean, he. Oh, he's. It's, he like, it's l- like guarding that post there, you right. know. It, uh, yeah, but he must have lost 30 or 40 pounds. Oh no, no doubt. Wesson is a big guy, man. And uh, kudos to Jalen. I'll give Jalen a B plus only because, uh, yeah, he was able to battle out with him. But it was a kind of an off game for Jalen. He finished with 11 and seven. That's kind of down from what we but, normally see. From but him. those three pointers. Oh, no, oh. no, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. Jalen's impact was definitely yeah. felt. He frustrated. I know. Uh, I know. We're not Caleb. supposed to give you a hard time when you give somebody an 89. But come right. on, Professor, right. give hey, him an A. I, I got to be the off kilter guy. I got to uh, be the difference maker. But I thought uh, Cowan outplayed the other Wesson, yeah. Andre Wesson, yeah. and DJ Carton had a great first half but fell apart. Yeah. I mean, they just Wayne, you said it. Yeah. They couldn't hit a shot. That when it really counted. When it mattered. They yeah. Look, whoever didn't pass the ball to Caleb Wesson near the end stay. should have been left here, not yeah. gotten on the bus. Because yeah. I, I said when he only had five points that he's going to get 18. He didn't get there. He got 15. He just couldn't finish that up. And speaking of finishing this up, we got to finish this up and head to the press conference. So, for Young Turp and wearing his NDSU, you know, they played for the national championship on Saturday against James Madison. Bruce is all fired up about a football game on yeah, Saturday night. Yeah, they got night. a pretty good game Saturday night. We'll talk about that a lot tomorrow on Turp Talk. Wayne will be on the first segment, talk a little hoops. Then we'll go football probably. Right. But uh, 
Hey, did Loxley have anything to say tonight to you? Not anything in particular. He I was, saw you talking to yeah, him. Yeah, it's, you know, okay. you, you're allowed to talk to people, not report what they say. <laughs> uh, not everything's on the record in this well, life. okay. All right, that'll do it. Maryland wins. We're all happy. We play again 7 o'clock at Iowa, and hopefully it goes as well as tonight did. Good evening from Xfinity Center. Drive safely, everyone.